Hey guys, Chad Trofkerbin here from the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. Jim Mills and I have teamed up with Smith Micro to bring you these brand new Anime Studio 10 tutorials. So I hope you're ready, because we're about to get started. In this tutorial, we'll be exploring three different ways that we can rig a character. The first we'll look at here is just one piece and we will go through and use the bone strengths to create our rig. So this will be pretty simple. So as you can see, we have a vector layer on our layers panel. We're going to create a bone layer and we can name this one bird. And we're going to take that vector layer we have and put it inside the bird layer. So now, as you can see, we just have one vector layer for this character and it's just simply a silhouette of a bird. So once we have that vector layer inside, the bone layer will control it. As you can see, when we use the transform layer tool, we can move basically the vector layer around with the bone layer. Now let's add some bones and make sure that you are on that bone layer when you do this. You can start on the bottom and draw a bone up. This will be our main or body bone. We will draw then two bones for the left wing. Now hold an alt and click to select your main bone. And then we will draw out the next set of bones for the other wing. Now the reason why we alt click or you can use the select bone tool is to make sure that we have the hierarchy set for these bones. You want everything anchored to that body bone. So Looking at the bone strings here, we can see what is influencing what in terms of bones. And if we move the bones around on frame zero with the manipulate bones tool, we can see what's going on here. So we could take the bone strengths and just reduce the influence to adjust it so we don't have such a distortion when we move those bones around. So we can go like that and try it again. And you can see now the middle doesn't get quite as distorted as it did before. And all we had to do was adjust the bone strengths. So that works pretty good. And remember, when we're on frame zero, we're not creating any animation. We're just simply testing things out. And if we take the bone strengths, we can see here what exactly is going on. If we want to play around with that, you can see the greater they are, uh, the difference there is there with the manipulation of the bones. So, so far things are looking pretty good it looks like. So let's now advance forward to frame one and what we can do is hit control F if you're on Windows or command F on Mac to create keyframes for all your bones, that's important. And then we will take the rotate bone tool and just rotate everything down like so. I say the rotate bones tool, we're using the rotate function on the transform bones tool, which is new to Anime Studio 10. So coming now to frame 18, we can once again take that rotate function, or we could just simply copy and paste frame one over to frame 18 for both of those channels so that we have a movement that will essentially loop. Now we can go to frame five, take that transform bone tool again using the rotate function and we can move the ends of the wings up. As you can see now it kind of creates a contrasting movement which helps with grounding this animation and we can do the same then for frame 14. So you kind of have this sort of thing going now with the flapping wings and it looks pretty good. So now we could Highlight both of those keyframes on 18, cycle it to 2, and then play this out. And that will just loop it over and over and over again. And you can see how this looks. And it's pretty simple. I mean, within a matter of about 4 minutes, we were able here to create a very simple animation just using the bone strengths and one vector layer. So it's pretty powerful. Now let's take a look at setting up a much more advanced rig. This will be using layer binding as well as binding points. So 
we'll first, of course, need to make a new bone layer for this character, and then we'll bring the group layer that we have made for this character into that bone layer. So now, once we've done that, you'll want to double click on your bone layer to make sure that layer nesting is enabled. And once you've done that, we can come onto the bone layer and we'll use the add bone tool and starting near the pelvis, we'll just draw a bone up like so. Then we'll do a bottom torso and then we can do a more upper torso and then we can do a small neck bone maybe right about here and then we can do a head bone. So now we can alt click and choose the upper torso bone create a shoulder bone and then have an upper arm bone going down near towards the elbow lower arm and then hand. Alt click the torso bone again and we'll do this on the other side. Remember we alt click so that we can select that bone so the arms and the shoulders are attached to the right area here. And the same for the pelvis. We'll alt click on the pelvis and then we'll draw one bone here for the upper portion and then for the calf and then for the foot alt click and then we'll repeat the process on the other side just like that so we have our bone set up and just to illustrate this we can see what the bone influence looks like but we could actually just get rid of the bone influence so let, let's highlight all of the bones and then just take the bone strength and reduce it to zero just by dragging to the left. Now, if we want to look to make sure everything is linked correctly, we can use the reparent bone tool and you can see where everything is linked. And that's why we talk about the hierarchy of bones. Now, if for whatever reason you messed up during the process of linking the bones, you can just take that reparent bone tool and click off and then click on to another bone to parent it to another bone, making sure that the bone you want to affect is highlighted. So just make sure that everything is linked the way it should be, similar to what you see here in the video. So now when we go into this character folder here that we made while we designed the character, we're going to come in here and bind layers to bones. That's the first step here. So we'll take the bind layer tool with the face shadow and click on the head bone. For the mouth, we'll do the same. That'll be bound to the head bone, the eyes as well. And many of these layers will be able to be bound to bones. Same with the head. So we'll do the same for the face. The scarf, we will leave that alone for now. And then we'll come down here to the forearm. We'll link that to the nearest bone, which is of course the forearm bone. And we have the front top bone. The chest emblem, we can link to that top torso. The underwear, I believe we will bind the underwear with points. So we can leave that one alone for now and we'll come to the torso and the torso will do point binding as well. So we'll come down here and let's bind the back forearm and the top of that back arm. And we'll leave the legs alone as well. We'll use point binding for that. So now if we take the manipulate bones tool and we move these bones around that we have bound, you can see how things are working. We can do like a strong, you know, pose like that. And for the most part, things work okay. There's a couple little things here and there that would need to be adjusted, probably with smart bones, which we'll be getting into here in a little while, where you can adjust some of that. But you can see that, for the most part, things look pretty good. And these types of layers, we can just simply bind to bones because we don't have to do too much in terms of editing. So now, what we want to do is we will go on here to the hero bone layer. And then, let's see here, 
let's come down here actually and go to well we could start with the scarf but that might we'll see if we can get to the scarf we'll go to let's say the underwear we'll start with the underwear or the torso so let's start with the torso <laughs> can't make up my mind today we will click on the bottom torso bone and what we're gonna do is select all the points for the torso and click bind points now you can see everything is bound almost like as if we bound the torso to the bone but of course we want some leeway there in terms of how it moves so let's click on the top torso bone and let's just try to grab most of the points here that are near the top like that we'll leave the bottom points as is and click bind points now if we move it looks like that but if we move that bone it looks like that now we have some you know distortion going on here which will probably need to be corrected with smart bones but we can do a couple more things here just to try some stuff out so we could take these points right here and then bind to the top torso as well just to see if that helps and it helps a little bit but we still have some some stuff going on that might not be desirable in terms of how this bends so let's once again here come in here and let's just take those top points and bind to the upper torso and it looks like we'll probably need to use smart bones but let's bind the rest of the torso vector points here we'll click on the neck bone and we'll bind these points right here to the neck and then we can take the head bone here and then bind those points like that and you can see now we have some movement going on there with the head which works and we'll come back then to the torso for some other things we'll be working on here with the smart bones so now what we can do here is let's go to the underwear next so we'll take the select bone tool of course select that pelvis bone highlight all the points with the bind points tool and then go up to bind points so now we will break this down just like we did before so selecting that bottom torso bone we will just grab the top of the underwear just the top points and then bind them so now when we move this you can see that the top portion kind of goes with the movement we still have some things we'll need to work out but it's looking better so now we can come down here and let's see here let's try the back leg here the back leg had some issues so we'll use the top bone of that leg highlight all the points of the leg and then click bind points and then we'll click the second bone of the leg the bottom bone and we'll try to go right at the bend of the leg here just try to come in like this and highlight those points and then bind it to that bone and then for the foot select the foot bone and then highlight everything here just that belongs to the foot or close to it and bind points now taking the manipulate bones tool we can move the leg around like so you can see that things are looking pretty good actually we might not actually have to do too much with the smart bones when it comes to this so you can see it's looking good we did forget to bind some of our details but we can uh, do that later on or we might just do that you know in our own time once this is over so now we can do something similar with the front leg so top bone highlighted go and select all the points and bind them with your bind points tool your bottom bone of the leg we can highlight all the points that make up the calf and foot bind points and then we can select the foot bone and then highlight of course the foot here and then bind points so we can test it out and we won't have too much movement with this leg just kind of how the position is but it's enough to where we can you know make the movement work so we can now work on some other elements here so as we can see here the underwear 
doesn't really move with the legs. So we might want to come in here to the underwear and just kind of come in here and do some different corrections here with what's going on. So we can select that leg bone, click bind points, and we'll simply bind that point right there. Hold in shift and bind this point up there and then click bind points. And we'll do something similar then with the other leg here. So we'll click that bone, click bind points. We will make sure we bind that point and then click bind points. So when we move now, you can see that there is some movement going on with the underwear. And of course, it's not perfect. We're probably going to have to use smart bones. In fact, I know we will just because smart bones can really help sell a lot of what's going on here. So, so far we are getting there. It's coming along. Those uh, binding points, corrections and all that have helped. So what we'll probably want to focus in on now is actually the smart bones. And smart bones are just basically ways for us to make some corrections. But before we do that, let's actually add some constraints here, just so we know how far to take the smart bones. So we can click on that top torso bone, and we can constrain it by clicking on bone constraints and checking the angle constraints box to negative 30 and 40, because that's pretty good in terms of how we want the movement to work. For the second torso bone, we can go to negative 30, and let's say... Actually, let's go negative 25 and 20. And then for your legs, we can constrain those as well. And, you know, these are things that you can play around with, but we'll go negative 50 and 30 for the bottom here. We'll put the first one to zero because it won't bend that way. The second to 70. And for the foot, we can constrain that one pretty uh pretty tightly here. We'll go negative 15 and let's go about 40. So with that now, we can kind of uh, play around here and you can see that we can't really move it much. Now we're going to want to focus in on naming the bones that we want to do as smart bones. So for the first one, we'll do lower torso and then we'll do upper torso. Now it's important that you remember these names when you create your smart bones because you're going to have to name your smart actions the same as these bones in order for them to be linked. So we'll now name this one back thigh, B period thigh, and then we'll name this one back calf or B period calf just to abbreviate. And we can do the same here for the foot. So now we have those named, and we're not going to do smart bones for every single thing, even though we could, just for the sake of time. We're just going to kind of show you guys here what to do so you can work on your own time when you're doing your own rigs. So now we went to Window and Actions, and we want to click on the bone layer. That's very important. Click on the bone layer, and then with that bone selected, it doesn't have to be selected, but we're going to do the lower torso one first. So you can click it for your reference when naming. Once you have the lower torso action created, you can see now that it's highlighted and we are within that action. So we can bend the character with our transform bone tool to the right, take the underwear layer, come over here, with the transform points tool and we're going to make the corrections that need to be made when the character is bent this way. And again, we have other tutorials on smart bones. So if you need a more in-depth video on how to work with smart bones, you can check that one out. But if you already are familiar with smart bones, you should be able then to follow along with this pretty easily in terms of exactly what we're doing. Basically, again, we're just making the correction so Anime Studio will auto-correct whenever the character bends this way. And we can work with any of the vector layers to make this correction if needed. 
So now, coming back out here to the main line, we can test this out by bending the torso that way. And you can see now that it makes that correction as we bend in varying degrees. So that works well for us. Now let's click on that bone layer again and make a second action named Layer Torso 2. And this will be the second action then for that torso bone. So we can come in here, bend it the other way, go into the underwear layer, and then take your transform points tool. And we're just gonna come in here and just make some corrections. Now, as we're making these corrections, you're probably wondering why we're doing it this way because there's a big gap here. You know, you can basically see <laughs> the background. Um, his torso or underwear isn't covering that up. Well, we can uh, correct that here in one moment. So what we can do now is once you have the underwear figured out, you can come over here to the torso layer and then adjust the torso during this bend. Again, you can do multiple vectors with your smart bones when you are making these corrections. So we can just come in just like that. Go back out here to the main line, go to the hero bone, use the manipulate bones tool, and we can go back and forth. Now, as you can see, going forward, it's not quite right. Um, we can probably go back into that action and raise the underwear. So we'll go and double click on lower torso two, and then we can just come in here and raise those points up. That way everything is set and a little bit um, more convincing when he's going that way. And you can page back and forth between zero and one just to kind of see the, the default position versus the position we are editing. Now we can try it again and you can see that looks better. It looks a lot more convincing than it did before. There we go. So, so far, so good. So, there will be some other corrections, of course, we'll have to do here, and we're probably going to have to focus in on the torso here next, because, you know, it doesn't really uh, move the way it should. So, we'll click on that hero bone, and remember, we got to name this the same as the upper torso bone. So, upper torso, that's the name of the bone, and we can go into that action, of course, and we'll rotate. Let's um, do this way first. Yeah, we'll go that way first. Now, we're doing a really extreme pose here. I don't think the character would ever bend this far realistically during animation, but let's just, uh, let's just do it anyway, um, just so we have it down. So we can just come in here and just kind of adjust the points like so just to kind of match the positioning of the bend. And, you know, this will require, of course, just some time and just kind of focusing in on what needs to be changed. It can take, you know, some time, depending on just how much detail you want to go into. You can really spend a lot of time on this, or, you know, smartphones can just be used in a short amount of time to make some minor corrections so that you can basically do it and be on your way. So we'll come in here with the uh, chest lines and the muscle lines and just make these corrections so that they make sense according to the bend of what's going on here. Double clicking on the main line, we can click on that hero bone, choose the manipulate bones tool and move that way. And you can see it looks a lot more convincing. And again, we're not gonna probably go that far with the bend, but you can see here that Anime Studio can definitely handle it. So that's uh, that's a great thing to know. <laughs> so what we can do now is we'll make another action here. So we will make one for the thigh here. So we'll just name this one back thigh or B dot thigh since that's the name of the bone. And we can come in here now and do one for this. So we can... Um, kind of figure out here how we want to correct this. You can see the underwear, of course, is having some issue when we move the leg up that far. So we can just go into the underwear layer and just kind of uh, move those points around to make those corrections. You can see now that's probably going to look a lot better when we use the manipulate bones tool here. It just goes up and you can see it uh, definitely 
definitely an improvement over what it was before. And that's really what it's all about. You just kind of have to go through here and pick and choose what you feel needs to be corrected. So what we can do here is let's, um, let's see here. Let's click on this bone and that's going to be the back calf. And again, you don't have to click on those bones when you do this, but if you want to reference the name, then make sure you get it right. Now we can bend the calf this way and then go into the actual vector layer for the leg. And what we want to do here is just bring this bend up a bit so that it's not caving in like it was before. Kind of make these uh, corrections. And there's some bone constraints in Anime Studio 10 that can help you with this too. The elbow bend comes to mind that could really help you out with that. So you may want to check those out. We also have a video for that as well. So you can see though that this is a very minor correction. So it didn't require a whole lot, which is really nice. Now from here, of course, there are several other things we can still do with this rig. But we're going to end the video here in the interest of time because really as I was suggesting, we could spend a lot of time on this, just perfecting, going through, adding a bunch of smart bone actions and making sure everything is how we want it to be, especially when it comes to the scarf. We didn't actually get to that. But again, using the techniques we applied here, you can really use this with any type of character rig and perfect the movements so that you have a top quality animation for your projects. If you'd like more information on Anime Studio, please visit the official Anime Studio website at anime.smithmicro.com. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you next time.